lab. And in the lab yesterday, you guys uh, did some tests with some solid chunks in a solution. Okay, and you wrote down check marks, and if you weren't here, I just gave you the answer, so you all get 100, or you're all getting zero, depends on how you look at life, I guess. Uh, half empty, half full kind of thing, whatever, I don't care. Uh, I'll record the marks someday when I get around to it, which means I'll never do that, so um, I don't care. This was just a fun thing to see if you actually saw what we call spontaneous reactions or not, okay? And you can look at your chart, which you should have out, your little page that I gave you yesterday. You don't have to make corrections, it's okay. You could even throw that piece of paper out, although I kind of cringe because it's chemistry. I don't like throwing stuff out when it relates to chemistry. Um, however, uh, I gave you the answers there. You don't need to make corrections. It's fine. Okay? Um, however, you can kind of compare and see how well you did, or how poorly you did, I guess, if you look at it that way, I guess. Uh, did anyone have, how many, how many did you get wrong? How many? Let's see. None? You're lying to me. You, four? Three? The last class had three wrong, so I guess that says something. Most of them probably pro probably lied. I don't know. Okay, um, I don't care. Quiet. Shh. Um, the point is this. If you got more than three wrong, I'm going to give you zero for that lab. And if you got more than three right, uh, you get 100. How's that? Okay, so who got less than three wrong? Uh, who got uh, more than three wrong? Put your hands up. Don't answer that seriously. <laughs> Okay, anyway, scratch that. I'm not going to do that. Okay, why would you volunteer? Thanks for being honest. At least I know who the honest people are. Okay. Um, however, um, as you can see here, according to my beautiful chart here, um, that's on your piece of paper, you can see the correct answers. Okay, And you can notice that there should have been some that had many spontaneous reactions. So if you look across the top, guys, uh, copper 2 plus looks like it's got a check mark in each one. Yes? Don't look at yours anymore because yours is wrong. Don't look at that. Okay? Look at mine. Copper 2 plus had lots of check marks, and so it had the most spontaneous reactions. Hopefully, that's what you saw. I don't know if it did or not. So when you put the metals into there, hopefully you saw something with each of those metals uh, happening with the copper 2 plus solution. So you can see that. Now look though, uh, kind of interesting here. If you look, copper 2 plus had the most spontaneous reactions. Fe2 plus had, well, in the most spontaneous reactions you could have had in this lab because we did five, the most you could have had was four, right? Because we didn't do it with itself. So you look at copper 2 plus, it has four spontaneous reactions. Look at iron 2 plus, it got three. Hmm, interesting. Uh, let's see, zinc 2 plus has two spontaneous reactions. Aluminum has one and magnesium had none. Well, how about that? Do you think you could kind of organize those in some kind of a chart or something? Most spontaneous to least? You could possibly, right? And then you might say, well, yeah, but Mr. Patrick, look along the left side. And then you'd say, look along the left side, and I'd say, hey, look at copper. Copper doesn't have, copper solid doesn't have any spontaneous reactions, yet uh, in this case, magnesium has four spontaneous reactions. Huh. How about that, eh? And then you get to, so magnesium looks like it's the best at spontaneous reactions, solid. And then you get to uh, something like, for example, aluminum would be the next best one, I would say, at spontaneous reaction. Zinc, and then iron, and then copper would be the worst. Copper solid would be the worst at spontaneous reactions. So then I start thinking, geez, I wonder if we could order those in some way, shape, or form to give, you, to give us kind of a, a relative idea of strengths of these oxidizing agents and reducing agents, or which ones are being reduced and which ones are being oxidized. So that's, in fact, what we're going to do here. Okay? Um, copper 2 plus, because it has the most spontaneous reactions, is identified as the strongest oxidizing agent, the SOA. This is a very important term, and I know I gave you the notes for this, guys. I get that. But we are kind of on a time crunch, and that's the only reason I gave them to you, because this is an important one, and we want to make sure we cover all this stuff here. So you're going to hear this term a lot, the SOA, the strongest oxidizing agent, which means it is the best at doing what? Huh? Strongest oxidizing agent means it's the best at doing what? Being reduced, yes? True? Oxidizing agents are reduced, are they not? Yes. 
Yes. Okay. So copper 2 plus is the best one at gaining electrons. True? Yeah. Because it does it with all those things. Okay. So these are things that you may want to consider writing down for yourself. To make a little note for yourself when you go back someday and look at this. We're going to talk about this for the rest of this unit. So it's kind of important. Okay. So the strongest oxidizing agent is the one that the best the one that's the best at being reduced. Okay. Okay. Vice versa, or at the other end of the spectrum, I guess we could talk a little bit about magnesium. Magnesium solid has the most spontaneous reactions. Well, I guess that means that it's the strongest reducing agent. It's the best one at giving off electrons, losing electrons, yes? Because if it's the best SRA, it's the best at oxidizing, losing electrons. Yes? Okay? Because it has the greatest number of spontaneous reactions. And then I told you guys, hey, look, if you look, there's four that have spontaneous reactions, and then the next one is three, so that's a little bit not quite as good. And then the next one had two, and the next one had one, and the next one had none. Geez, we could organize that some way probably from best, strongest, rea or the, uh, you know, for example, the best one at being reduced to the worst one being reduced kind of thing. And vice versa, we could organize it from the best one that gives off electrons to the worst one that gives off electrons. Okay? And that's what we're going to do. So we can make, and this is a key thing here, a table of reduction half reactions. We always do reduction half reactions for these tables. Reduction, half reaction. So if I'm going to do a reduction, half reaction, electrons go on what side? Left side or right side? When I say reduction, you say left. Hey, ho. All right. Uh, there's a song about that. Yeah, you don't. Um, anyway, reduction, half reactions, left. You're going to write all these as reduction, half reactions, both in the correct order. Okay? Relative strength of one oxidizing agent to the redu or reducing agent to another. All right. So by convention, so in other words, all the time, okay, it's agreed upon that the strongest oxidizing agent will always appear in the top left of the table. So the SOA is always in the top left. of the table. In other words, the one that's being reduced the best is in the top left. Contrary, if you think about it, SOA, okay, so this one had four spontaneous reactions, then we maybe will write down the third one, the second one, the one, and the zero. Which one has the worst, which one is the worst oxidizing agent there? Which one had no spontaneous reactions as far as those ions there? Yeah. Uh, which one on the table exactly? Yeah, kind of, well, yes, we're getting there, but. Huh? Which one? Which one had no spontaneous reactions for the ions? Magnesium 2 plus has no spontaneous reactions, right? So I would probably write that one here. Well, if I write magnesium 2 plus here, what's going to go over here? Well, magnesium solid would go there. Okay, I'll show you this in a second here. Okay, the tables will always be arranged as such. Watch. Now, unfortunately, you guys have to look on yours because I'm missing two here. So, um, let's see here. Um, let me just write this down real quick here. Uh, once again, aluminum 3 plus here and uh, three electrons gives you aluminum solid. And the last one here was magnesium 2 plus, the one that didn't have any spontaneous reactions. Gives you magnesium solid. Okay, that's what your that's what your says there, right? Yes. Okay. However, right? 
Copper 2 plus had the most spontaneous reactions, so we would say that this is the SOA. In fact, I want you to put that on yours because it's being reduced, right? So SOA. We said that in the notes it says magnesium solid is the strongest reducing agent. That one goes there. Okay? And that's how you're going to organize this. Okay? Copper 2 plus is the best one at gaining electrons. It does, the, does so the easiest out of all these. And magnesium is the best one at giving off electrons. Okay? It's the strongest reducing agent. All right? And you're always going to organize them like this. And how do you know they always go like this? Well, simple. Because you have to write them as reduction half reactions. If you're writing them as reduction half reactions, the most the most number of spontaneous reactions, that's this one here, has to be here because it's being reduced, the best one at being reduced, and if it's being reduced, it's the oxidizing agent. Hence, the strongest oxidizing agent because it's in the top left. Okay. Same applies, kind of opposite, of course, for the magnesium. Right? Okay. So we always write them like that. Now, there's something called the reaction spontaneity rule. And the reaction spontaneity rule says this, basically, a spontaneous reaction will occur if the OA, so the oxidizing agent, okay, is strong enough to remove electrons from the RA. And some of you guys are thinking, uh, I don't know, don't know about that. Well, let's break it down. That was my Mr. Roboto dance, in case you missed that. Hey, pay attention. Spontane if the OA, oxidizing agent, what is the oxidizing agent really? It's the one that's being reduced, yes? So if a spontaneous act reaction will occur if the, re the one that's being reduced is strong enough to take electrons from the one that's being oxidized is really what that says. True? Okay. The one that wants electrons, if it's strong enough, will take it from the other one. Okay, the one that's being oxidized. And there's nothing he can do about it. Because that's the way it is. That's the way he rolls. Okay? So that's what this says. The oxidizing agent is strong enough to remove electrons from the reducing agent. The one that's being reduced is strong enough to take electrons from the one that's being oxidized. Okay? That's not always the case, by the way. So just so you know, that doesn't always happen. The relative strength of the OA or RA is identified by its position on a table. Look, we just talked about that, guys. Here's a table right here. This is what we call a redox table. It's identified by the position on this table. We just said copper 2 plus was the strongest oxidizing agent because it's at the top left. This one would be the next strongest oxidizing agent. This one would be the next strongest oxidizing agent. This one would be this pretty weak, and this one is the weakest oxidizing agent. It's the weakest oxidizing agent because it's the best at reducing agent. Yes? Strongest reducing agent, next best, weaker, weaker, weaker. I don't know how to make that weaker, weaker. Weakest. Okay? So the table is set up like that because it identifies their position according to how strong they are. Okay? Now, I think that's it for that page there. Okay, next. If this takes place, and this is kind of important, this is, this is not only going to follow for this chart, but actually there's one in your data booklet, and there's another one later down the road. Same kind of deal. It's always like this, okay? That's why they set them up like this. It's kind of the same way. It's the conventional way of doing it. If the oxidizing agent is higher than the reducing agent, basically if it looks like this, if the oxidizing agent here and the reducing agent here, it's what we call a spontaneous reaction. Okay? If the oxidizing agent is higher than the reducing agent, like this, 
then that's a spontaneous reaction. Is copper 2 plus higher than Fe solid? Spontaneous reaction. Check it out on the first page if you don't believe me. Copper 2 plus is higher than zinc. Spontaneous reaction? Yeah. Check it out on the first page if you don't believe me. Copper 2 plus higher than aluminum? Yep. Copper 2 plus higher than magnesium? Yep, because it forms spontaneous reactions with all of those. That's why it's up there. Correct? Spontaneous reactions. If, if the OA is lower than the RA, so aluminum 3 plus is lower than the zinc, that is a non-spontaneous reaction. And you should be able to look on the first page and see, in fact, that there is an X between aluminum 3 plus and zinc. And there should be, because there was no spontaneous reaction. Yeah. Based on check marks and X's, which we're going to do. Okay? Patience, my son. If the OA is lower than the RA, okay, then not spontaneous, not going to happen, okay? Or if it did happen, it would take an incredibly long time, but it's probably not going to happen. You're not going to see a result. So when you put some of those in yesterday, nothing happened, right? And that's because the OA wasn't strong enough to take electrons from the RA, okay? That's what happened there. So here's a table here. Now, yours looks a little different because it doesn't have all these funny uh, U's and stuff in here. So let me just quickly uh, fix this here for you. Uh, let's see. X, X, check, X. Um, okay. So you're going to be asked a question like this. I pretty much guarantee you'll probably get one diploma question like this because this is a gimme is what we would consider a gimme here. You have to look at this table and decide which one maybe perhaps is the strongest oxidizing agent or which, one, which set of equations basically fill, fits, best fits this uh, criteria here. Okay? And they might give you a list of this. They might not give you all four here because you uh, you're on a time crunch, of course. So which one has the most spontaneous reactions? Which one? CD2 plus has the most spontaneous reactions, and of course you can see there, it doesn't react with itself, right? So that's why that's there. Um, CD2 plus has the most spontaneous reactions, yes? Okay, and we want to write them as reduction half reactions. So if I was looking at this chart here, I'd say, hey, this one has one, two, three spontaneous reactions here. Let's write that one down first. So I'd say CD2 plus and two electrons gives me CD solid. That would be the first one I write down. And I know that it's the strongest, it has the most spontaneous reactions, so it should be the strongest oxidizing agent. Yes? Okay. Then I would look next. Uh, let's see, CD2+. Plus. Which one has two? Looks like V2+, plus, yes? Has two. So I'd write that one down next. V2+. Plus and two electrons gives me V solid, right? If it's a two plus, guys, it's the same as before. The left side has to equal the right side, yes? So if it's V two plus, I need to add two electrons, two plus, two minus zero, zero, right? So I would say that one's probably the next best oxidizing agent. Uh, then which one has one check mark? V two plus. Okay, would be next. And then which one doesn't have any check marks? Well, in this case, there's four of them, so uh, RA2 plus looks like. Okay, so it looks like that there. Yes, good. You always write them as reduction half reactions. So that's, of course, and you have to because you want the SOA at the top. So the oxidizing agent is the one that's being reduced. It's the strongest one goes on the top. Look, is this, look, what's the pattern here? SOA. Hmm, okay. What about the radium solid? Let's look at that one for a second. Let's, let's look this way. Look, radium solid has three check marks going that way, 
right? What's next? Uh, two, BE. What's next? V. What's next? CD. Look. R A B E V C D. That's the S R A. Strongest reducing agent. Okay? And it goes up that way. So the next, this is the strongest reducing agent. The next best one at reducing agent is this one. The next best one is this one. The weakest one is the R A there. Or sorry, the C D is the weakest reducing agent. Okay? So that's how the chart goes. Strongest to weakest, strongest to weakest. Opposite, right? Strongest here, weakest here. Weakest here, strongest there. Okay? That's, what the ta that's how the tables are built. All right? Any questions? Okay? So, once again, it's spontaneous if this is higher than this or this or this, which it is. That's what we just did from the table. So we know it is. That's the purpose of the table. That's, that's helping me build this. I know that this, okay, and this, for example, would be non-spontaneous because BE2 plus and V would have an X in there if you look that up. You can look it up if you don't believe me, but it will, okay? All right? So that's how you build it from tables, check marks and Xs, or spontaneous, not spontaneous. They usually do checks and Xs, okay? However, okay, redox tables can also be built by examining a series of net ionic uh, of several reactions uh, and observations of spontaneity. For each reaction, the OA and the RA must be identified. So obviously you need to know which one is being oxidized and which one's being reduced in order to do this properly. And the order in which they arrange in the table is based, of course, on the spontaneity rule. If it's spontaneous, the OA has to be higher than the RA, like this here, right? And it's got to have this kind of thing going to it. Okay? OA, RA, that's spontaneous. And of course, if it's non spontaneous or not spontaneous, it's flipped around. The OA has got to be lower than the RA. Okay? So then you look at some equations. The order in which they arrange in the table is based upon the spontaneity rule. Then you look at, for example, a set of three equations here, okay? And what you're going to have to do is start somewhere and decide which one do you want to start with here, which reaction. You don't necessarily have to start at the top one, by the way. You can start anywhere here. I would suggest just kind of going in order and seeing what happens kind of thing. That way you kind of keep track of everything. So look, we're going to start with this equation right here, the first one. And you're going to need some room. So, because... Basically, we don't know what this table is going to look like. We don't know where the cobalt 2 plus is, and we don't know where copper 2 plus comes in. Okay? I don't know where all that stuff is going to fit into yet. We're going to build this table. So leave yourself a little bit of room, okay? because I'm going to start writing equations down, and I don't know if they go above or below or whatever. Okay? So here we go. Look, cobalt 2 plus goes to cobalt. Is that being oxidized or reduced? Okay, so this is my OA then, right? True? Indium goes to indium to, or sorry, indium zero goes to indium three plus. That's being oxidized. So that's my reducing agent, yes? And then the second thing we need to talk about is if you look at these three, act three reactions, it looks like this. And this actually do react together to give you this and this, yes? Whereas if you look at the bottom one, this says this one and this one doesn't happen. Non-spontaneous. I would consider this one, of course, spontaneous. This one would be spontaneous. And this one would be non-spontaneous. Okay? Because no reaction takes place, so I have to assume that it's non-spontaneous. Okay? So look. If this is, in fact, spontaneous, this has to be higher than this, true? The OA has to be higher than the RA. So this is where I'm going to start. I'm going to start with my OA here, okay, cobalt 2 plus and cobalt salt. Do I have to start with that one? The answer is no. Can I start with this one? Sure. But you have to get the positions right according to those two. 
I always like to start with the reduction half reactions. I always do reduction because it's just easier for me. So I'm going to start down here. I'm going to say cobalt 2 plus and two electrons is going to give me cobalt solid. Once again, I don't know exactly where that's going to go in this big scheme of equations here. So you want to leave room above and you want to leave room below. All I know right now, guys, is that cobalt OA, this OA has to be higher than this RA. Yes? Indium solid. Where would I put indium solid? I'd put it down here somewhere. I don't know where, but down there. Because the OA has to be higher than the RA. Okay? Uh, what charge did indium have on it again? 3 plus? Yes? So I would put it like that. Okay? Cobalt 2 plus is the OA. And this is the RA, and I know that this is spontaneous. Yes? You follow me so far? Now, that's all I know from those, that equation there. That's the first equation only. So this one is now done. The next one I would say is this one here. Co copper 2 plus goes to copper solid. So that is being reduced, right? So this is my OA. Cobalt goes to cobalt 2 plus. Well, that's being oxidized, so it's my RA. This is spontaneous, so I know that my OA is higher than my RA. Yes? Well, what can I tell you from this? Copper 2 plus and cobalt solid. Where do I need to put copper 2 plus so that it is spontaneous? above or below that cobalt one there? And the correct answer is above because copper 2 plus is higher than cobalt. Yes? Look at the equation again. Copper 2 plus is higher than that. Spontaneous. Copper 2 plus is higher than cobalt solid. Spontaneous. OA is higher than the RA. Yes? Questions? Chris? I don't know if it's the strongest one yet. It's stronger. Okay. Good. Now, I only added one equation because we already had one there. We already had the cobalt one there, so I didn't need to do anything with that. I'm done with this one, though. Co copper 2 plus and palladium, there is no reaction. So here's copper 2 plus. Where does the PD go in relation to that? Above or below? The answer is above. Because this is non-spontaneous because this is lower than this. So no reaction would take place. The copper 2 plus is not strong enough to take electrons from the palladium because the palladium, okay, basically the palladium 2 plus is actually going to want to take, uh, uh, oops, sorry, the palladium 2 plus is actually going to want to take electrons here. Now the palladium 2 plus, you might say, how do you know it's 2 plus? Uh, I had to look it up on the periodic table. Usually you don't have to do that, but in this case you did because there's no reaction on the side, okay? So that's actually your order that you want to have there, yep. It, it didn't specify, but we go with the, probably the most common one in most cases. Okay? So, that's your table, right? This is the strongest oxidizing agent, turns out, and this is the strongest reducing agent, turns out. Okay? Is that good? Any questions, anyone? Yes or no? Watch this. You ready? Check this out. It is like magic, kind of. Oops. Oh, it was like magic. There you go. Okay? So that's a good table there for you to have. Okay? The SOA, top left, palladium. I'll just fix that a little bit there. 
Okay. SRA indium. Okay. Questions? You know, once again, you can always check these. You can check these out. It's a little harder with this one, but because if you don't understand OARA spontaneous, non-spontaneous, it's gonna be a little hard for you to check out. But you know, does palladium two plus is that higher than this here? We don't really have any evidence to back that up except for this here. So you have to understand that this there was no reaction for that because this was lower than that, right? So you do have to understand both ways, spontaneous and non-spontaneous, to get that. Copper 2 plus is higher than cobalt solid. Copper 2 plus is higher than cobalt solid, spontaneous. This last one here, cobalt 2 plus is higher than the indium. Cobalt 2 plus is higher than the indium, Sol uh, uh, spontaneous. Okay? So that's kind of what you need to do for that. All right? Yes? Maybe. Next, we got four reactions now. Yeah. One more. This really didn't work out well at all, but you guys have this on your chart there, so I'm going to let you guys look on your chart there. And let's take a look at this one. So, where are you going to start with these? Well, you know, probably the first one. I mean, where else, where else do you want to? Do you want to start in the middle somewhere? I guess you can. I don't really care. But you might as well start somewhere. I don't care where that is. Um, I probably would start in the, or in the first one. Okay, guys, quiet. Um, the thing with this is, once again, okay, you need to decide which one is the oxidizing agent, which one is the reducing agent, because you need to write them as reduction half reactions. So you've got SR going to SR2+. Plus. That is being oxidized or reduced. What do you think? Hey? Oxidized, so that's your reducing agent, yes? Um, CE3 plus goes to CE solid. Reduced or oxidized? Reduced. So that's probably the one I want to start with, okay? Because I need to write down a reduction half reaction. I always find it easiest to find, you know, the one that's being reduced first. So I'm going to write that down, okay? Now, once again, I have no idea. For all I know, guys, all the other ones could be below it, or all the other ones could be above it. Or I could have half and half. I don't know. I have no clue. Okay? So I do know that. And I also know that CE3 plus it is a spontaneous reaction. It tells you that right above the arrow, spont. So I know that CE3 plus is higher than SR solid. So I'm going to put SR solid down here. Now, I don't know. I might have to put all the other equations between these, so you might have to keep that in mind. Make sure you leave yourself enough room. Strontium 2 plus, and I actually, I'm not going to lie to you, I actually forget from first class already. So I don't know what, where these all go. Okay. So I know that for sure. This is higher, this OA is higher than this RA spontaneous. Okay. Secondly, it says here nickel solid and CE3 plus. Well, here's my CE3 plus here. Now, you'll notice I didn't use the numbers out in front because I don't just want to keep this as basic as possible. I don't need to worry about balancing stuff. The reason it's balanced there, like 3 and 2 and all that stuff, is because it's balanced for that chemical reaction. I'm not doing that chemical reaction. I'm doing half reactions. So I don't need 2s and 3s out front. That's just going to confuse you more. Okay. So nickel... And CE3 plus is non-spontaneous. So where does the nickel solid go in relation to the CE3 plus? Think about that for a second. Where does the nickel go in correlation to this right here? And the answer is above. Yes? So I'm going to put nickel solid up here. Not spontaneous. And uh, if you look in the equation, it says nickel 2 plus and uh, two electrons gives me that there. Okay? Yep. Sorry, what? Yep. Nickel is a reducing agent. Well, because it's not spontaneous. Okay? Because it's not spontaneous, this OA 
is lower than this RA. Okay. Uh, next, nickel and two H pluses gives you H2 gas. Well, we have nickel solid. Okay. Here's my nickel solid. Where does H plus go in relation to that nickel solid? Where does the H plus go? Is it spontaneous or not spontaneous? Does it go above or below? H plus goes above. That is a spontaneous reaction, so the H plus has to go above. This H plus goes above this nickel because it's spontaneous. Spontaneous means the OA is higher than the RA. However, there is a little trick with this one, okay? And this happens occasionally. This has to be H2 here because it's a molecular element, yes? Okay? So in this case, because it's, a molec it's H2, it has to get, there's no such thing as H by itself. It's H2, molecular element. I have no very clear friends. So because it's H2 there, I need to have my 2 here, which means I actually have to add two electrons. Okay? So that one is a little bit tricky. That's where I would use a, because I want a balanced chemical half reaction. In this case, a reduction half reaction needs to be balanced. Okay? So I still need to have that 2H plus two electrons because it goes to H2. Now, if it just went to, um, I don't know, on the right side, if it just went to something like, you know, uh, like a metal, for example, like, uh, you know, magnesium or something like that. I don't need to worry about the two part. I would never have to worry about that. But in this particular case, because it is a molecular element, I have to fix that. Okay, yep. Um, no, no. The nickel, yeah, okay. The nickel solid and this was non-spontaneous. Non-spontaneous. Right? That's what it says. Nickel, solid, and CE3+, non-spontaneous. Yeah. This one says it's spontaneous, so this is spontaneous. Yes? Okay, so that takes care of the third equation. The fourth one, okay, says platinum solid and H+. plus. Well, where's my H+, plus? it's right here. Now, I'm just going to give me a second here because I'm going to try and make a little bit more room here. I don't know if I need to put this on top yet or not, but I do know that uh, I am running out of room here, so give me one second here. Okay, so um, now it says platinum solid and 4H plus is not spontaneous. And now it says 4H plus, and I get that, okay, but really... Where's my H plus stuff? That's what I need to worry about. Here's my H plus here. Where does platinum solid need to go? It needs to go here. Not spontaneous, right? Not spontaneous. And apparently it tells you there's platinum 4 plus. So PT 4 plus and 4 electrons would give me platinum solid. Not spontaneous. This and this not spontaneous because the OA is lower than the RA. Yes? Okay? And that is all of them. You're done now. Now you might say, well, why is it 4H plus? That's confusing to me. And once again, because based on this chemical reaction here, I needed to have the 4H pluses there. It has nothing to do with this, really. What I'm looking at is the H plus compared to the platinum. And then a balanced chemical half reaction, reduction half reaction, is what I care about after that. This is just because of this chemical equation. That's why you get the 4H plus there and then the 2H2s. Okay, there's no other way to balance that. That's why. Okay. Once again, that doesn't have to play into this part here. The general idea is that the H plus is lower than the PT solid. Okay. Questions, anyone? Once again, as per usual, turns out this is your strongest oxidizing agent. This would be your strongest reducing agent. Okay? That's how that chart would work out. Yep.
Spontaneous. It's in your notes. Spontaneous. Non-spontaneous. Two diagonals. So, this spontaneous. That and that spontaneous. That and that spontaneous. That and that spontaneous. Because that's higher than all those. Yes? So those would all be spontaneous reactions. Non-spontaneous would be an example of this here and maybe this one here. Or this and this is non-spontaneous and this and this is non-spontaneous. Yep. No. All right? Questions, anyone? Questions? It's no? Okay. Now, a couple key things here. Listen. Just because, and I saw this in, first in the first class, and I thought to myself, this is smart. This guy knows what he's doing. Okay, I won't name names. But he went through the first equation. He said OA, and this is the RA, and this is the OA, and the RA. But here's the deal, okay? Just because the first two look like that, I, I gave them three or four equations, I think, and he went through and labeled all the OAs and the RAs before he started, basically. And just because the first two look like that, there is no reason why we cannot tell you the RA and the OA here. So you better make sure you know which one's being reduced in that equation and which one is being oxidized in that equation, because it makes a big difference. Okay? So that's the first thing. Okay? Make sure. Okay? So that's the first thing. Listen closely, guys. So make sure you go through and make sure you know which ones are being reduced and which ones are being oxidized. And then the second thing we like to do to you, after you get a little practice with this, we like to switch it up a little bit here for you. So we're going to give you something like this, A2+. Plus, and then on this side here, you're going to see A6+. Plus. And when you see this, most people think, hey, that's a 2+. Plus. Uh, that's probably going to get reduced down to A solid, right? But it's not. Correct? They don't have to be A2 plus solid. It doesn't have to be B3 plus to solid. This is A2 plus and it goes to A6 plus. What's actually happening here? What? It's losing four electrons, correct? AKA, it's actually being oxidized, isn't it? And people always, when they see A2+, plus, they think, oh, it's being reduced because it's got a charge. Not necessarily. So you better be careful. You need to look. What's this doing to that? Okay? That's actually being oxidized. So then you know that the other one's probably being reduced. Okay? But you have to be careful. Don't just look at them. Look at both sides. What's actually happening? Is it going down in charge or going up in charge? Because that's going to tell you whether it's reducing or oxidizing. And then by default, that tells you whether it's a reducing agent or an oxidizing agent. Okay? So be careful with that. Like I said, take your time, go through them, and pick them out. Okay? And I'm not going to lie to you. These ones here, I think, I think, uh, okay. All right? Uh, they're not overly, overly difficult. But eventually, someday, we like to challenge you a bit. We're going to give you something like this to see if you actually know what's going on here, which one's actually losing, which one's actually gaining. Okay? So just be careful with that. Take your time, go through it, and decide which one is the OA and the RA. Good? Questions, anyone?